All right, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to CJ Roy Outdoors. Uh, thank you guys again for tuning in. I always appreciate it. So, you guys, uh, today <clears throat> I wanted to talk about an issue that's been surfacing around the fishing community here now for what seems like a very long time, and that's forward facing sonar. And I think, in general, technology when it comes to fishing and the outdoors in general. Now, I have sort of changed my stance on this over time, you guys, so I have to be very clear about that. Uh, I have definitely changed my opinion about this matter. Um, I used to be sort of against uh, technology and fishing, but now, um, even though I've never really used uh, forward-facing uh, sonar, except when I've fished with uh, other people, when I've fished by myself, I've never personally used it, but I've talked to some people, I've seen it in action, I'm probably going to get it myself, um, and I wanted to just offer kind of my opinions about certain things to relate to that too. Um, Randy Blockett and Hank Parker um, and a couple of other people are very against forward-facing sonar and possibly fishing technology too. Now, this is no disrespect to the older generations of this sport. I grew up watching Bill Dance, uh, Hank Parker, Jimmy Houston, um, all those guys. And I actually do like Randy Blockett's channel, even though I disagree with some of what he says, I still respect the time that he's put in the game. Um, he's very knowledgeable. He's very good. And of course, whether I agree with him or not and everything, um, I do truly think he cares about the sport and I appreciate his opinions and conviction, even though I don't, like I said, necessarily agree with everything he says. So let's kind of get right into this, you guys. Um, so forward facing sonar is a very smart technology in the realm of fishing and it could potentially change the game of fishing. And I might not even say potentially, it will change the game of fishing. And in general, I think technology has changed the game as well. So let's let's just say this. Um, let's let's address it issue by issue. Basically, I will say this: <clears throat> with any technology, there is good and bad. So let's address this. Does it give people an unfair advantage? Let's say if a one angler can't afford it and one angler can, let's just say. In my opinion, it does give or can give people an unfair advantage if one person has it and one person doesn't. Now, a potential solution to that could be that you have tournaments without forward-facing sonar and you have tournaments with forward-facing sonar. Um, so you can separate it, but I do think, yes, that it can potentially give people an unfair advantage. Now, um, with that said, though, um, I also do think that there is a massive amount of benefit to this, and that's why I think that some of these guys that grew up in a different generation of fishing kind of just need to, like, they don't have to like that it's there, but honestly, let these younger people, this younger generation of fishing people, let them enjoy this technology, because the, the game has really changed. There's a lot of fishing pressure now, and I'll tell you one thing, you guys, if you're a working guy nine to five and you don't have time to go fishing every day but you have forward-facing sonar and you want to make the best out of every trip you go on that's only going to be to your benefit because not everybody has the time to fish every day and the thing is if you can give yourself that little advantage to where you'll enjoy fishing more then by all means use it like it's it, it's it, it's gonna be a good tool for you to have and so I think that that's the perspective that some of these guys miss some of these guys don't understand that uh, a lion's share of the population who fishes are not professional fishermen. They don't have time to go out every day. And when they do go out, they want to go out there and catch fish. And realistically, from what I can see, forward-facing sonar is just a different style of fishing. That's, it. That's incorporating technology. And I don't personally see anything wrong with that. As long as, like I said, in a, in a, in a tournament setting, I think that the playing field should be more level. But for the guy that's going out there and he's just an everyday fisherman, then you know what? Go out there and use that forward-facing sonar and use it to your advantage. And you know, another thing is too, and I always say this, back back in their days, and I'm talking like Jimmy Houston, um, Hank Parker, Bill Dance, and you know maybe even you know Randy Blockett, um, I haven't heard Bill Dance talk about this or Jimmy Houston, but I have heard Randy talk about this a lot, and I've heard Hank Parker talk about this recently. But realistically, you guys, back back in their time, 
the game was different. And I can tell you this, since the pandemic, okay, there has been a massive rise in the number of fishermen. And not only that too, I don't want to sound like a hypocrite here because I'm on YouTube just like all the rest of you guys are, but social media has made more spots now. So more fishing spots now are more public knowledge now. Okay, there's not a lot of quiet fishing places left anymore. I'm not saying that there aren't any, but I'm saying is if you live anywhere near a populated area, the word's probably already gotten out. And even if you are in a quiet area, the word's probably gotten out. So the fact is, there is more fishing pressure arguably than ever. So if you're going to fish on a lake that has massive amounts of fishing pressure, and most guys are using forward-facing sonar to find these fish, then guess what? These fish are eventually going to get harder and harder to catch as the fishing pressure increases. And again, you know, Social media is good in one way because it's got more people into the game and hopefully it's gotten more kids into the game and more younger people into the game because it's a very positive thing to do for young people. But at the same time though, think about this. There's probably more fishing pressure than ever on a lot of these lakes. And so for you to enjoy the game more and catch more fish, you want to use every moral, legal, and ethical advantage that you can out there. And in my opinion, you guys, if you're using forward-facing sonar like that, there's 100% no issue with that. And I and I think it's time to get with the times a, a little bit. And I'm guilty of not completely getting with the times because I thought to myself, well, shoot, you know, that's not really real fishing and stuff. But the fact is, times change, traditions change, and sports change. Uh, like, he, they like things evolve things change things progress and i think that the older generation kind of needs to get out of the way a little bit and let the younger people take advantage of this new technology because again the game has really changed and i'm sure that back in their day they had their challenges that, that they face as well but i'm telling you guys and i truly believe this that since the pandemic there's been a lot more fishermen that have came out. There's been a lot more YouTube channels on fishing that have been made that are massively, massively, massively successful. Although this has gotten the word out about how good of a sport fishing is, again, it's brought a ton more people onto these lakes. I can even tell you that where I am, you know, um, there's a bunch of small lakes that are around me and they're not in big towns, but they're near one big town. And the fact is, even on weeknights sometimes, you know, even on weeknights uh, on these smaller lakes, you know, you see six, seven, eight boats. And, you know, these guys, I don't know if they have, you know, forward facing sonar or, or not, um, but on small lakes like that, that's a lot of fishing pressure. And if you get that consistently every night, which depending on the season, you will see six, seven, eight boats on these smaller lakes. And if you add that up every day, that adds up after a while and that's a lot of fishing pressure and again the game the game really changes and at that point you're competing against a lot of other fishermen and you know you think about it too you guys fishing is a is a very time consuming activity okay and with it being such a time consuming activity i personally think that you need to use your time efficiently and Time is money. And granted, I respect, and I'll say this again, you guys. I do respect the Randy Blockets of the world, the Jimmy Houston's, the Hank Parker's, the Bill Vance's uh, of the world. Those guys paved the way, and they really did put a lot of time in to the fishing game. Nobody can deny that. But here's the thing. If you can use your time more wisely, you can catch more fish in less time you can use your time more efficiently that's going to mean a lot to the guy who can't fish every day okay because some people don't live right next door to lakes some people have to drive a little ways to get there even if you have kind of a short drive like 45 minutes maybe if you factor it in you know from there to the lake and back to your place you gotta you gotta figure that's almost two hours of time right there automatically okay and say that you're a guy that works until, you know, 4.30, 5 o'clock every day, okay? And say that you can only go during the weeknights and you got to be back home by a certain time because you might have a family or something like that. You figure 
that that could end up being five hours real quick okay and if you do that two or three times a week let's just say for a certain period of time okay you are already talking about 15 hours of time okay that that is a lot of time to be putting in period so you can either grind it out and catch one or two fish or or you can utilize all the resources at your fingertips and if you can afford it this forward facing sonar technology and fishing then becomes more enjoyable fishing then becomes hey i'm learning more about the fish in less time and it's a good thing you guys and we can't and you know we can't hold back you know future generations from from this new way of fishing because again you guys things change okay things change and honestly i feel like with what the newer generation has to deal with now with the way fishing has changed and with the upcoming of social media this is a this is this is leveling the playing field for those guys to enjoy the sport and i really do believe that part of giving the next generation the best chances possible of enjoying the sport I believe that as long as we're doing it in a proper manner, we really should promote technology. And I don't think it takes away the integrity of the sport. I don't think it takes away from the old school tradition. I think it builds a new tradition. And as long as it's not in a tournament context, you guys, because you know what? One argument I could definitely see, you know, it, it, it can give you an advantage in a tournament setting. So honestly, I feel like that there needs to be rules change as far as like, um, you know, the tournament settings go. That part I can see, okay? If it's a competition, I think that the playing field should be as level as possible. I mean, I don't think anybody should have that drastic of an advantage. But I'm thinking for the everyday guy who just goes out there and fishes um, in his spare time, or even the content creator, you know, let's, let's talk about that to you guys, okay? On YouTube, fishing has became very, 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 very popular, okay? It's became a big thing. So, let's break this down, okay? If you have a content creator, and, you know, this really could even challenge my opinion on the tournament stuff, but he, but if you have a content creator that makes his living off of fishing on YouTube, okay? Nobody is going to want to watch a guy not catch any fish, or most people wouldn't, Okay? They want to see those fish in the boat, okay? And if that guy has got sponsors or, you know, people um, giving him money to promote their products, they need viewership. And viewership is basically catching fish. Viewer, uh, viewers is um, giving them that excitement of reeling in that big one the theatrics of it all the entertainment of it all that's that's the gist of it you guys that's that's really the gist of it so and you know again i don't i don't think technology is always good all the time i have my own suspicions about ai for example so and i think in some ways it's going to be good and in some ways it could prove to be pretty bad it all depends on how you use it okay it all depends on how you use it so I think it's the same thing with fishing. And again, I really emphasize this, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, I really emphasize this. We have a new generation of people getting into this game. And they're getting into it when social media has a big reach. Because if you think about it, okay, TV back then, okay, because you only had TV back in the days of Bill Nance and all those guys, okay. So you had TV that had a big reach, okay. That already had a big reach. But now you have TV and you have social media, okay? So think about that. That's another thing that people don't understand. People don't understand or they don't put into perspective that back then you had TV. And I don't, maybe, maybe there was some social media back then. I don't really know. But I know that it, it's not, that if there was any, it was not as big as it is today, ladies and gentlemen, okay? So if you think about it, you have fishing shows on TV now, okay, on just the regular television channels, and I mostly watch YouTube. I don't, I don't, I, I don't really watch, you know, fishing on like actual televised, you know, cable networks and stuff like that. But like, if you think about it, now you have TV still because that's still around, 
and you have social media. So the word is getting out as far as where the places are to fish. So that means there's more fishing pressure. That means that if you don't have advantages at your fingertips, fishing might be more difficult for you. Now again, let's take this at another angle. Do you, is forward-facing sonar your only hope? I'm proof that it isn't. I've never, like I said, outside of being, you know, fishing with friends, when I fished on my own time, just me, I've, I, I, I've never used it. And I'm a pretty decent fisherman. But I'm going to be investing in it in the future because I want to get even better. I want to enjoy fishing even more. I want to be able to educate you guys even more on fishing. And I think that that's the thing. And even though that my channel, you know, my channel is now switching to a overall outdoor channel because I don't want to do just fishing, you guys. I, I love the outdoors just in general. But when it comes to this, I really do think that forward-facing sonar is another tool for us to understand fish. And the more we understand fish, the better fishermen we become, the more we enjoy the sport. If some, if somebody sucks at something, ladies and gentlemen, that's that's not a recipe for somebody staying in something very long. If they suck at something, they don't enjoy it, and they're not having very much success, what do you expect, you guys? What do you expect? So, that's it for me. Um, leave me your thoughts below. Again, um, just my opinion here, you guys. But as always, I appreciate the support, and we'll see you in the next one.